So we we'll just say self dot controller equals controller. Now when we create methods, other methods in the view class, we'll have access to that controller object. So now going back to our controller, now that view requires this argument here. When we initialize it, we have to pass that argument. So in this case, the controller is, is the object that we're in. So we'll say self. So when the instance of view is created, we pass self, the our instance of controller. It will go to the initialized method of view, and then it will get bound to this name, controller, which is an attribute of the view class. So now, going back to our view, our view is what we're going to mainly begin with. So we're going to make a, a, a main method in here as well. And just to test this out, uh, we'll say print in main of view. So this controller has a main method as well. And when this main method gets called, we're going to want to call the main method of our view so that once we have it all set up, that's going to display our user interface. So we'll say self.view.main. Now when we run this, it should say, um, oh, um, when we and then we forgot to take this out which is automatically added so we got a uh, type error over here that says uh, missing one required position argument and params so when we try to create an instance of model without giving it any any parameters, any arguments, then that's what this error erased this error. So going back to model, we took out the params because for model we're not gonna like I said, model is not gonna be aware of either the view or the controller. So we're not gonna pass it any any arguments. So now when we come back to our controller and run it and we get what we wanted, which is in main of view. So we created an instance of controller called the main method. Um, and when we created the instance of controller, it created in its initialized method an instance of model and then an instance of view. And then calling the main method of controller calls the main method of view, which currently just prints in main of view. So for <clears throat> our user interface, our uh, GUI or graphical user interface, we're going to be using the Tkinter package, which actually comes uh, packaged with Python. When you download Python, it's already one of the uh, preloaded modules. So all we need to do is import it. So I'll import Tkinter as TK, um, just so that uh, we don't have to keep typing tick enter. We can just type TK whenever we want to reference the tick enter module. And then we're actually also going to be using um, an extension of the tick enter module called TTK. Uh, it's a little bit more modern. It has a uh, theme widgets. Um, so like I said, they look a little bit better. They look more native to the system that you're on. Um, the original um, widgets that are in the Tkinter module look a little bit more outdated. Um, so we're going to import or from Tkinter we're going to import TTK. So those are basically the two modules that we're going to use for our, for our GUI. Um, you can do it just with Tkinter, but like I said it looks a little bit um, outdated. Uh, the buttons look uh, square and um, all the other widgets look square. The, the TTK module 
the buttons look a little bit like with rounded corners stuff like that so but we still need the Tekenture because like I said the TTK is an extension so it has those theme widgets but a lot of the original stuff the stuff that you don't need to concern about how it looks is still contained in the original Tekenture so <clears throat> in order to use a Tekenture app we would use the tk.tk or tkenter.tk um, you can use it without a class if you just create a, a root object but in this case we're creating a class so our view class is going to inherit from the tkenter.tk um, and inheritance is, is one of those more intermediate programming concepts but basically when you inherit from a, another class you have access to all of its attributes and methods so we're going to inherit from, in this case, we imported to contrast tk, so tk dot tk. And then just how the view class has this init method that gets called when you create an instance of the view class, we also have to initialize the tk dot tk object. And the way we do that, is with what's called the super. So we'll call super dot init, and that essentially calls the initialize method of the base class that we're inheriting from. So when we call super dot init, it will call the init method of the tk dot tk object. And then after that, we'll have access to all of the methods and attributes in the TK object. So, and then the way you start a TK.TK .tk application is by calling the main loop uh, method, which is essentially a, an infinite loop um, that just keeps going until you close it either by closing the window or some other form if you uh, bind the button to it or something like that. So in order to show our window we need to call the main loop method and we'll do that here. So we'll say self.main loop and one thing to know about the the main loop method is that once you call it like I said it's an infinite loop so any code that's after it will not get executed until you're out of the main loop so if you need to initialize other variables um, like over here in the like if we need to create an instance of model stuff like that we need to do that before we call the main loop method which gets called by the main method of, of the controller in this case but let's say we had another method over here um, in the controller class that said initialize you know some other variables and we tried to call that after calling main it wouldn't work because when calling main here calls main of the view which then starts the main loop which is the infinite loop and then the only way to execute code after that is to exit the main loop. Um, so in this case we already have pretty much everything we need. We have the model and we have the view called main called the main loop. So we're good. So now when we run this we should see a window. And then launching my so it's on this screen over here so this gave us this little simple window it's a blank window and like I said the main loop is, is running while this window is showing so the only way to execute code after the main loop would be in this case since we don't have anything on the window would be to close the window so now it's out of the main loop and you would be able to execute code after the main loop so now that we have that